Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. And there would be those, as there always are, who would say, impossible. Impossible. Let those now, in these few brief moments of this message, be filled with an energy that could not possibly be from themselves as proof that the portal has been opened and the door has swung. And what you have are simple words from the other side of the veil through a human being the way all scripture has always been delivered on the planet. Humans have written all of it, all of it, through the divine connection that is built into the DNA. All of it. And this is no different. For the one whose voice you hear now is no different than the voice that you have heard in the prophets of old. And the profundity of what he says through me is personal. It's not for the ages. It's for you in the chairs. It's for those in the building. This is the change. This is what we call the new energy. For it opens the door for all to do this, which often is seemed as odd and strange and weird, and I'll tell you it, it's none of those things. It is a connection, a pipeline to spirit, what you call God. It is the love that you're missing in your life that you could have by pushing on the door and in comes the family to sit in your lap, to hold your hand, to tell you that the impossible is doable. My partner outlined what I wanted him to say. He said nothing that was in his notes except for two things today. Because I wanted those who were here to hear his story and to feel his heart. I am Cryon. I am a partner. I am a sister, a brother to all here. I am not some disembodied energy that floats in space. I am inside you, should you choose to look, as well as the very essence of God itself. And there would be those who said, well, if you represent God, would you please explain to us why you haven't come down here and straightened out this mess? Let it not be lost on any of you where we sit at the moment. Let it not be lost on any of you of the resources and of the integrity of those who built the concrete that you sit in and stand upon at this moment. For all around you, there is the emphasis and the intent on unity. Put it together, don't tear it apart. Solution, not division. Peace, not war. And so in this atmosphere, I answer these questions. Where is God at these times, you might ask? And so again, I will present to you what is happening on this planet that you need to know. God does not interfere with the light, dark balance of humanity. Humanity generates the light, dark balance, and then God is invited into the light parts. And if there are more light parts than dark parts, you are going to have revelation. And that's what's happening. So within this puzzle, I tell you that God knows who you are, where you're sitting right now, and what this organization is about. It is no mystery. There are so many questions about this, and so I still have yet another metaphor, one we've used before, but which I will elaborate on at this moment. There is a lighthouse on the shore, and its job is to shine the light and stay put. And should there be ships coming to the port, should there be, they have the invitation to see the light and steer safely into port and not under the rocks which hide under the waves. And there are three kinds of ships, basically, in that ocean. 
And the first kind is where the pilot house has been boarded up. And the skipper and all of those responsible for navigation know where they're going because they've been there before and they trust their maps and they trust all of the mythology of the ages. Those sailors who went before, they don't need the lighthouse. It's redundant. In fact, they don't even like it. And so they make their way with their own devices to the port. And some make it and some don't. And what they fail to see is that the waves are always changing and the tides are shifting. Even the weather patterns are moving around, if you've noticed. But they stick with the old and they say, well, it'll work, it'll work, until they find themselves on the rocks. The second kind of ship is the one who keeps their pilot house boarded up unless they're in trouble. And the wind comes up and the waves change. And they take the boards out. They say, now I'm in trouble. Where are you, lighthouse? They see the lighthouse. They're thankful for the lighthouse. And as soon as they're in port, they put the boards back up. Thank you. I only need you when I'm in trouble. And the third kind of ship, that is the one who never put the boards up on the windows and is looking for the lighthouse first because they understand that the waves shift and the tides are moving and that they never know where the rocks are. And so they look at the lighthouse for guidance into the safe harbor. We have just given you the three kinds of humans, basically, that would become enlightened or not become enlightened, and there doesn't have to be many of those of the third kind. Less than one half of one percent of the earth has to be aware of their divinity and their light to send their power through meditation and prayer to the rest of the planet to create peace on earth. I'll say that again. Less than one half of one percent. And so therefore, cry on, what is it all about in the Middle East? And why is there so much turmoil? The focus is there. The troops are there. The war is there. The death, the killing, the unhappiness, the sorrow. Oh, the sorrow. What is that about at a time of light? I will tell you, dear ones, again, yet again. When have you seen this before? And the answer is you never have. Could it be that the light has become so bright that it now exposes the dark areas that were hidden from you before, the hatred that you were not seeing before? Could it be that these things present a puzzle for you to solve? Could that be? And if you're one of those ships which has taken the boards down and seized the light, you will say, that is exactly what it is. I see things that the light is showing me now that I never would have seen before. Indeed. Without this light at this time shining in those places to expose the darkness to you, those areas of the Middle East would not have changed for another 100, 200, maybe even 300 years. And it's definitely time to change it now. You're heading into something now. And even before I tell you about this new frontier, I will, re I will tell you again about the organization literally whose basement you sit in at this moment. <laughs> there are those who say they're useless and they're worthless and they've done nothing for a decade. I'm crying. And I know the souls. I see them coming and going on this planet. Let me tell you a truism. And then you can go upstairs and ask them what they do. What would you think of an organization that could save one billion lives a year? Would it be worth it? Would it be worth it? And you would say, well, of course it is. Well, it, let me introduce you to the United Nations. And what the media sees in the Grand Assembly and those who pound their chest and discuss and call names is not what the organization is about. But that is what the media says it's about. And they will say it does nothing and it can do nothing. And I'm telling you that there are a million years that you never see a million lives saved every year but for this organization. Twenty percent of that is, is, is in measles alone. Measles! And how many people do you think measles kills in this great land? It isn't here that they're doing it. It's the rest of the earth and these United Nations. And that's just one aspect 
of what they're doing. And that's just lives changed. That doesn't even tell you about the diseases cured or what about the smiles on the faces of the children. That's what this organization is about. I am cryon. I am telling you that I see it and I know it. Do not shift your light from this place because it doesn't suit you to what you see in those places which are dramatic. Because I will again say it, soon enough you will see the results in the grand assembly as well. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. I would like to tell you about the new frontier. There would be those who would say it is, it has to be China. We say that is not the new frontier. Oh yes, there is going to be amazing things take place in China. The new industrial revolution for the planet. But that's expected. That is not new news. You knew that. Spirit does not give advice. Spirit gives the revelation of potential futures should you choose to accept them. <laughs> and so let me give you one. Advice for the reader. For those who can make a difference, here are my words about China. The dragon is slow to move and has been here for thousands of years. Whereas the country where my partner sits right now is barely 200 years old. It knows what it is doing. It is studying capitalism. It is not done. For the Asians do very well in taking things apart and putting them back together, studying how they work and then making them better than they were. And they're doing that with Hong Kong. You think it's an accident that they inherited Hong Kong after a 99 year lease in your lifetime? You think that's an accident? They are studying it and they are learning it and indeed they will make the same mistakes that your country did along the way. But you would be well advised in a future potential scene which would be positive if this country and the West in general would support them in the areas where they're weak and give them the knowledge and the wisdom to run the things that they need to run without imposing a Western culture on them. Let them have their Asianness. And they will develop an economy that is even stronger than yours. And they may surprise you in the process. And that is not new news. Well then, if it's not China, it's got to be the Middle East, you say. And I say to you, it is not that either. The Middle East is what it is you see now, a cauldron, a puzzle that needs to be solved and stabilized. It needs to be stabilized so that you can move past the 2012 mark into promise. It doesn't have to happen by 2012, but if it started now, it would be a good thing. It's about stabilization. It's not a new frontier. It's the cradle of civilization. It's civilized. It has its cultures and its cities and its modernness next to its camels. It's not new. What part of the earth do you think that I'm going to talk about next? What is the new frontier? I will give you information that only those past your lifespan will be able to verify. But of course, many of you will be back by then. I know who you are. All of you, as you sit here and why you're here. I know of the puzzles in your personal life. I want to talk about the AU. What is that? What do you think it is? <laughs> I want to talk about the AU, which probably will not be seen for 50 years, two generations. The African Union. He met the doctor today, the twist master, I call him. Who's one of the ones who's going to help cure the continent of Africa. 
For when the citizens of that great continent have health, they will then have economies. And what you do not know, and the underlying support, is that there are literally trillions of what you would call dollars that are sitting and waiting to be invested in their health in their economies, in these cities of the future, in the African Union, a conglomeration of states much like you see in the European Union, only bigger and more powerful, with their own stock exchange, a securities exchange which will rival anything the earth has ever seen, even the Chinese. Because the resources that the world will need are in Africa. It is the next great frontier. And in this new energy, past what you had written before for yourselves, which was termination due to elimination in a millennium, in this new energy, that continent must be cured. And it is in progress and will be. There are three great inventions coming to that continent and one has been described today in technological terms the other two are in progress and will also be curative these three all together will cure the continent much of it even in your lifetime if indeed this organization can be part of it are you starting to connect the dots Bring peace in Africa. Concentrate on those who are against the peace. And bring them the knowledge of why they should have it. Even the reasoning alone, without the force, is such a powerful thing. Indeed, these cities will create a civilization that this planet has never seen, rivaled it will be. One that is able to rival anything that has been before. That is the new frontier. The very seeds of that you are going to see in your lifetime. The good doctor is part of the puzzle. And you will see others. Watch for the funding. Against all odds, the kinds of monies that will be spent there will be astonishing. And eventually there will no longer be the tribal warfare, the corruption that is there, even in the collection of the shiny stones. You don't believe me? You will. Oh, one final thing before I go. I'll reveal for the first time and the only time what my partner has agreed to do in his next lifetime you see on this side of the veil there is no time all is known not, pre not, not predestination but a predisposition of what he has already decided to do at a level that he has no concept of he has no idea what's coming but he'll hear this and he'll know and he'll rejoice in approximately 65 to 70 years, there is a potential at this point in time of a man being born and growing up and at the year of his life that is 36 years, you will see a young new leader emerge with a black face in Africa. And that will be my partner, the man you see, sitting and channeling me now. This is what he chooses. This is what he wants. And his leadership will be spiritual, not political. And his leadership will have to do with, with those who are in need of the emotion of the heart. Watch for it. And it will not have the name cry on for it will be a culture name that they understand in their language. Watch for it. And if it is not in your lifetime, we tell you this, dear human being, save this transcription for those who will be here so they will know him by his stripes. And that is cryptic. 
but you'll know when it happens. Indeed, I am aware of where I sit. And I do sit, for I am in my partner at the moment, and I feel what he is feeling. It is a meld, is it not, of spiritual things. Know this day that this room has been visited by an energy that is different from anything that you expected. You will walk from this place. And if you choose to see that lighthouse, dear human being, and if you choose to take the shutters off of your pilot house, dear human being, you're going to leave different than you came in. All of you, all of you, don't be surprised, perhaps, if a little healing went on at the same time. Blessed are those in the hallways of this place who call themselves employees, the rank and file, who save a million lives a year. God knows who you are. And so it is.